Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're back with the series Road to FM. If anyone is new to this channel in the series Road to FM, I play classical over the board games, I analyze them and basically track my progress until I become a FIDE Meister. As you can see, right now I am at 1880 ELO. So we are getting close to 1900 and I am playing this guy who is rated about 1700 yellow. So you might think an easy win, right? Let's check it out. And also another thing I'm doing this video, I will try to remember the whole game from my head. So I don't have any notes. And basically we will see can I visualize and remember the whole game. Let's go. He started with d4 and I went for c5. Now he already started to think, which is usually a good indicator that my opponent did not prepare. But I also did not prepare since this guy didn't have any games online that I could uh, see. Now he went for knight to f3 and I played d6, hoping that I will get a dragon Sicilian, right? Now here he played bishop to c4 and after bishop to c4 basically I only know one thing about this position. I know that black is fine and I should not be worried. That's what my coach said to me I think like five years ago about position like, positions like this and that's the only thing I remembered. I played knight to f6 attacking this pawn, he went d3 defending. And now this position with bishop to c4 and d3 e4, this structure I should say, remind, reminded me of a uh, grand prix attack. But in that situation the knight would be on c3 and white would go for the f4 attack. But uh, I continued with g6 since I wanted to get uh, nearly the same positions as in Dragon Sicilian. Because Dragon Sicilian is quite decent against uh, these uh, systems in which White doesn't really know what he's doing. But now he again went for c3 which surprised me but I still continued. Bishop to g7, he castled, I castled and now he went for bishop to e3. That is actually an interesting move because usually you don't move the bishop here since black can go knight to g4 and just immediately chase away the bishop. So I have thought about knight to g4, but then I remember the same thing I tell to my students. You should develop first, then you will start to think, oh, how can I attack? So I developed first, and now he went a3. And just from the general standpoint, a3 seems like a mistake. Like he didn't follow the rule to defend, uh, to basically develop his pieces and that now gave me time to play bishop to g4. White could also in this position play h3 to prevent me from going bishop to g4 or just play knight to here. But after a3 that allowed me to go bishop to g4 and that is good because after he tries to chase away the bishop now I can take the knight and uh, in the game he took like this, but had he taken like this, I would go knight to e4, queen has to go back, I take the bishop, pawn takes, and in the end I would win this pawn. Uh, in a different line, queen can stay guarding this pawn, but it doesn't matter, I would take still and ruin his pawn structure, potentially going knight to d7 and being better. But he took with a pawn. Now that is a double-edged sword. He's weakening his king, but also he's playing for some kind of f4 and that f3 pawn will not be a weakness. So I immediately try to go for uh, this f pawn and I play knight to h5. Now that seems weird, like I'm not going for that pawn. But basically what I want to do, per se, if white plays a general developing move, I would here play bishop to e5. And now I have stopped white from playing f4. And if this pawn stays on f3, 
it will be in a way of everything. Like the queen can come out, the knight can come out, and it, it is just not a good position. My opponent noticed that, of course, and he played f4. Now let's promote that. So he played f4, which is the best. And now I try to regain the control over f4 square immediately with e5. And had he taken, I would take the knight. And this position would be pretty nice because these knights are so strong and threatening to ruin his pawn structure. Potentially going queen to h4. So if he tried to chase away the knights, queen to h4 would just be winning after something like takes, queen check here. Takes the... Uh, to give checks and then I would take this bishop with check again and in this position I would be winning so instead uh, he didn't take that he found the best move which is f5 okay I cannot play a game right now he played f5 and that is the best move because he basically doesn't want me to open this e5 square for my knight and that is okay, but now I go knight to f4, and I kind of force him, be uh, because I, I take this pawn, so I force him to take me, and voila, I had this, now I have this square for the knight. So yeah, uh, in this position he took this pawn, he didn't like the idea of me uh, taking here and potentially ruining his structure, he took... I took like this and now he went not queen to g4 but instead he went uh, knight to d7 uh, to d2 and the point of that is he basically wants to get his knight to f3 okay so many people are sending challenges but I can't right now so uh, instead I played knight to e5 I attack this bishop and basically now I have this nice square for the knight and here he made an interesting decision. He went for knight to f3. And he let me uh, ruin his pawn structure. But after I thought about it some more, I realized that this isn't really uh, the, all that good for me. Like when I take, take, and per se something like queen to b6 going after these pawns, he just defends. And from a general standpoint, he will go here, 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 and take my pawn. Now that is not so easy, but he has an idea which is pretty clear, this weakness. And I just didn't want to go for that, because I didn't see what, what can I do. His plan is so clear, but my plans are like what? Potentially going after this pawn... Or I don't know. Really, I, I, it's hard to find a plan in this position. So I didn't take. I went for bishop to f6. And that is a very good move. Because what is my idea? My idea is to go king to g7, rook to h8 and attack him on the h file. He took. I took. And now he went queen to g4. He's threatening to take this pawn because I'm pinned. But... It fits in my plan. I go king to g7 and I will do a rook lift. Now my opponent realized that and he went king to g2. And after rook to h8, he went rook to h1. He defends. I attack the queen. He goes here. I attack this pawn again. He goes rook to h2. And when I double up, he doubles up. And he has put all of his resources... In defending this pawn now in a position like this if I want the draw I can like shuffle back and forth with my queen wait just wait it out and my opponent would probably have to accept the draw here but I didn't I wanted to win I went for b5 and when he goes here I realize okay I cannot break through on this side of the board let's go here he went king to the not king Okay, I'm crazy. He went queen to e1, d1, and now I go b4. I open up. He took, I took, and now he tries to get clever. He plays queen to b3. 
basically pinning this pawn and now I cannot take because I lose the rook. So here I could have played bishop to e7 which is what I should have played. In this position I simply did not spend enough time to calculate f, a5 uh, and bishop to e7 as um, basically alternative solutions to just attacking. I thought that my attack works but apparently now after king queen to b4 and uh, when I go f3 to try and do, to do this, this was my plan. Basically, in this position, his king would not be in uh, all that much danger as I thought it would be. So that was bad, but my opponent didn't to take here immediately. Instead, he went for f3, so let's promote that, which gave me time to go here. And when I played that move, I uh, went outside of the playing hall. And uh, there were a couple of guys there talking. They asked me how I was doing, like what what was my position like. And I said, I have some uh, initiative. I should be good, possibly even winning after getting in with the rook. They didn't quite know my position. And of course, this isn't like cheating. They weren't trying to help me. They were just like asking, how am I doing? And then, as I said that to, to them, I remembered, wait a second. I need like one, I basically need two tempos to go after this pawn. But what if he takes? And when I give check, and if I now go here, he will go here. So let's show that. And basically, uh, now I have to exchange queens. And I will end up in this endgame where I'm just down a pawn. And I cannot win this pawn. So I started to think, and like, oh wait, am I? did I just blunder? And then I went back at the playing hall and I looked at the position again and I realized, oh yeah, I have blundered. So I didn't play this move because of queen to b7. Instead, I tried to go queen to c7, but that was another mistake because he still goes queen to b7. And I thought this check will save me, but it did not. It did not. He went d4, and now only move. I was here also getting low on time, so I think I had like 10 minutes left, per se. And I went queen to e7. I tried to trade down into this endgame, but this simply does not work. So this is uh, all that happened in the game. And if we rewind one move back, in this position my opponent is winning if only he finds this one move. In this position he has to go rook to a1. Why? Because he is basically threatening to win this pawn and I cannot really uh, defend it all that well. But he blundered because in this position he took in the center. Which gave me just enough time to, after I take this with this rook, now after rook to a1, he isn't really threatening to take this pawn. Do you see why? Because I go bishop to c5 and I would fork him with my bishop. So he realized that and he went for b4, basically taking away this square. And it is also a very smart move because after bishop to d8, trying to rotate here anyways. Uh, he basically can play c4 and after this check uh, c5 so yeah that's why I realized okay let's see how can I improve this position oh this rook isn't really doing much anymore so I go went rook to h8 back let's promote that and now he went uh, rook to a1 still but that was his mi big mistake the biggest mistake of the game and now it allows me to play rook to c8, which is a great move. Now I target this pawn, and more importantly, I also threaten to give this check, which would in the end win a rook. And here I was happy with my position. I realized that after rook to c8, I saved my position. Now, as you can see, it just shows all zeros, and I kind of felt that in the game. 
And also uh, what helped me is I saw my opponent now shaking his head and being like mad that he mm, blundered. It wasn't really that uh, uh, obvious, but you can see him shaking his head and basically going like this. And the problem is he tried to defend with rook to a3, but now I played a brilliant sacrifice, bishop to b4. And when he takes, now I go rook to c2 check, king to f1, and I would win this rook. Okay, let's rewind. After he played rook to a3, I immediately took this pawn because I was getting low on time. I had like 5 minutes left. And when I took this pawn, my opponent offered me a draw. Now, uh, in order to understand the position, you have to know some context. Basically, uh, this was played in Sunday's club league. And my club is currently the number one placed. And in order to keep that, we had to win this game. And also, we have to win the next one uh, in order to win the whole event and possibly qualify uh, for the stronger league. So the winning uh, of so winning the whole match was the most important thing in this game. So when he offered me a draw, I basically uh, asked uh, the judge, "Can I consult with my team captain?" And now, for those of you who didn't really play over the board chess or like leagues, this might be weird, but you can actually uh, ask ask the judge. If you can ask the, your team captain, can you, ex, can you accept a draw offer? And that's what I did. So when I, my captain uh, got in this position, he saw uh, this. And also, uh, you have to know the team uh, situation and standings. Basically, in, at this point, we had two points. And we need three and a half, uh, which is uh, basically more than 50%, to win. And since we had two points already, when I would accept a draw, we would have two and a half. And the guy that was playing next to me had a winning position. So basically, if I draw and my, uh, my uh, teammate next to me wins, basically three and a half points is guaranteed. So uh, he told me to accept the draw and to play it safe. That's exactly what I did. I wasn't really happy because my opponent was lower rated. And I felt like I could push this posi position for more. But I just uh, accepted the draw. and Which was good. In the end, we went on to win the whole match. Now what could have happened in this position was rook to c2. And now he cannot really protect this rook, because this rook check. And now if he goes here, he gets mated. So he would have to go here still and lose the rook. So after rook to c2, uh, he would have to go king to f1. I would have taken the rook. But now he takes here and this pawn is undefendable. But I would probably go rook to g5, takes here, king here, takes and rook to here. Now about this position, he does have this nice, as you, as Hikaru would call it, wooden shield, which allows him to have a pretty easy play. I can never really do anything with my rooks to this wooden shield. But what I can do is be very annoying per se if he plays something like this. This is basically immediately unstoppable checkmate. I try to checkmate him, he has to go here to defend. But after rook to c2, uh, ladder checkmate is undefendable. So, you know, in this position I do have some tricks. But per se, uh, my opponent would probably find the best uh, way to defend in this position, which is rook to g4. And after I try to do everything the same, king to g1, rook to c2. Now he has this move, king to h1. And with this, he will always defend. And you have to understand in this position there is no way I can win against uh, a bishop and so many pawns. So yeah, 
I guess uh, I could have played on, but because of the team situation, I accepted a draw. So, yeah, if you come this far into the video, drop a like, it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to uh, support my content and if you want to see more content like this, drop us up. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.